Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Bruce Gulland, and I'm Liz Wade. Spotlight uses a special English method of broadcasting. It is easier for people to understand, no matter where in the world they live. Some people drink it with food in the afternoon. Some people drink it to give themselves energy in the morning. Some people drink it as part of a ceremony. Some people drink it when they are sick. Some people drink it hot. Some people drink it very cold. People have been drinking it for hundreds of years, in hundreds of countries. What is it? Tea. Tea comes from the Camellia sinensis plant. People pick the leaves off the plant. They set the leaves to dry. The tea leaves are ready. When all the water from the leaves is evaporated, there are many ways to prepare the leaves before making the tea drink. Some tea leaves are left open to the air before they are dried. This makes the leaves darker. They will taste stronger. Some people mix tea leaves with flowers, oils, and other plants to give teas different tastes. The people who originally discovered tea developed these methods many years ago. The story of tea begins in China. Chinese history says that over five thousand years ago, Chinese Emperor Shen Nung discovered tea. Stories say that a dry leaf from the tea plant fell into the emperor's cup of hot water. The emperor saw that his water turned dark. He tasted the water and liked it. This was the first cup of tea. However, it started, tea became very popular in China. People believed that tea was healthy. People in China also created many different ways to prepare tea. In fact, a man named Liu Yu wrote a book just about tea late in the eighth century. Soon after this, tea traveled to Japan. Japanese Buddhist priests traveled to China, and they brought tea back with them. In Japan. People developed special ceremonies to serve tea. Serving tea became a new form of art. It was most common among wealthy people. Tea was an important part of both Chinese and Japanese culture. It had traveled to other Asian countries too. But tea had not yet traveled anywhere else in the world. Finally, in the late 1500s, Portuguese travelers brought small amounts of tea back to Europe. Portugal was one of the first European countries to trade with China. Portugal worked with the Netherlands. To move the tea through Europe, Dutch ships took tea to France 
and other countries on the Baltic Sea. Only very wealthy people had enough money to drink tea in Europe. It took many months to transport the tea from Asia, and only a limited amount was transported. But more countries started to trade with China. They also brought tea back to Europe. Prices became lower, and more people could drink tea. Today, England is the European country most known for tea. British traders started shipping tea to England in the late 1600s. Tea trade had become a very profitable business. England imported about eighteen thousand kilograms of tea a year in sixteen sixty nine. Ten years later, the country imported six times that amount of tea. British colonists also brought tea wherever they settled. Tea became very important in India. It is still a very important crop there, and Indian tea is known around the world. Tea played an important part in one British colony you might know. This colony is now known as the United States of America. England sent tea to America. But as time went on, England raised the taxes on the tea and other goods it sent. The people living in the colonies did not like these taxes. To protest the high taxes, a group of colonists took a large shipment of tea and threw it into the ocean. Today, this event is known as the Boston Tea Party. It was one of the most important events in the American Revolution. Tea has also changed over many years. In the past. People drank tea by putting the leaves directly into the water, but around 1908, an American inventor developed a new method: tea bags. Thomas Sullivan put the tea in a small silk bag. This bag of tea could be put directly into the hot water. At first, people in Britain did not like tea bags, but during World War II, people could not get their normal tea, so they had to use tea bags. Today, most tea bags are made of paper, and they are very popular in many parts of the world. Today, people on every continent drink tea, but people in different places drink tea differently. In the United Kingdom, tea became part of the daily meal. Traditionally, two meals involved tea in British homes. These meals became popular in the 1600s. The first was afternoon tea or low tea. This was popular among wealthy people. They would drink tea and eat small sandwiches of meat and bread. 
This meal happened around three o'clock in the afternoon. The other meal was called high tea. High tea was a larger meal eaten later in the night. It was popular among poorer people. In Western Asia and the Middle East, a popular way to enjoy tea is as masala chai. Masala chai is a drink made from black tea, but this drink has sugar, spices, and milk in it. Around the world, people boil plants and flowers to make drinks similar to tea. These are called tisans. A tisan is any drink made from hot water and any plant material, except from the tea plant. They are also often called herbal teas. In areas of South America, people enjoy a particular tisan. The drink is called mate. People make it from the leaves of the yerba mate plant. A person puts dry yerba mate leaves into a dry gourd. This is a container made from a dried vegetable skin. He then adds water to the gourd. He drinks the liquid through a thin metal tube, a bombilla. People in southern Africa make a drink called rooibos. This hot drink is made similar to tea, but instead of tea leaves, it uses the leaves from the rooibos plant. The drink is a red color. And is often called red tea. However, you drink tea. The next time you have a cup, think of all the people around the world who are joining you. Enjoy. Do you drink tea? What kinds of tea do you drink? You can leave a comment on our website, or email us at radio at radioenglish dot net. You can also comment on Facebook at facebook dot com slash spotlight radio. The writer of this program was Joshua Leo. The producer was Michio Ozaki. The voices you heard were from the United Kingdom and the United States. You can listen to this program again and read it on the internet at www.radioenglish.net. This program is called "The Amazing History of Tea." Visit our website to download our free official app for Android and Apple devices. We hope you can join us again for the next Spotlight program. Goodbye.